County Attorney. Uh, the theme of this year's ceremony is Reaching Every Victim. As part of National Crime Victims Week, it's also encompassed Sexual Assault Awareness Week. So why are we wearing denim? Everybody in my office, was, it was really hard to get them to wear denim, as I'm sure you can imagine, wear their jeans. But why are we wearing denim today? April 25th is a day to wear denim to bring attention to the crime of sexual assault. Why denim? In 1998, in 1998, a teenage girl in Italy was raped by her driving instructor. The man was convicted, but the case went to the Supreme Court of Appeals in Rome. The court overturned the conviction, arguing because the girl, wore, because the arguing that because the girl wore very tight jeans, she must have had help to remove them, thereby consenting to have sex. The case made international headlines, the young, and the young woman's jeans became a symbol of awareness that what someone wears is never an excuse for rape. So by 20 years old, I was being bruised, I was being hit, and I couldn't say anything. But against all my mother's belief and teaching, in 2001, I walked away from the house with my five-year-old daughter, $20 in my purse, and a $600 income as a housekeeper. I left the house. I went to the Barbara Police Department and the Fort Garden. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. They referred me to the county attorney and to the district attorney in Georgetown. As soon as I got there, I got all the help I needed. Within 24 hours, I got an emergency restraining order against my ex -husband. I also got a shelter where I took my daughter. It was very difficult, but at that moment, I needed to get divorced from him. They also referred me to legal aid where I got divorced from him. In 2004, I enrolled myself in Austin Community College to start taking English as a second language. I barely speak the language. I couldn't write a sentence when I got there. Within two semesters, I took my PSI requirement, and I was able to get college class. By 2006, I was accepted in the nursing program, and I started school full-time, but I also was working at Lambert Hospital as a technician and taking care of my daughter full-time. I graduated in 2008 as a LDN. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alma Vasquez, so we're going to speak with the presentation of the awards this morning. The Williamson County Victim Advocates have selected the following nominees as recipients of the 2012 Hall of Fame of the National Crime Victims Rights Week. Our theme this year is Extending the Vision, Reaching Every Victim. The County Attorney's Office Juvenile Division Advocate has selected Michael Cox. The County Attorney's Office Adult Misdemeanor Advocate proudly announces D. Hobbs as being nominated by the Texas Department of Public Safety Highway Patrol. Trooper Nathaniel Nakehead. The Williamson County Sheriff's Office Victim Assistance Unit has selected Patrol Sergeant David Denson. The Williamson County Sheriff's Office Victim Assistance Unit has selected Detective Junior Ray Hicks. It is by Detective Christopher Daly, Hope Alliance. <laughs> Officer Christy Willie Britt. This nominee is by Grand Rock Police Department. Detective Jeff Hill, the district, the, uh, the district attorney's office. Mr. Cody Henson. Georgetown Police Department, Sergeant Dale Duncan, Children's Advocacy Center, Detective jo Donald Ford, and by Taylor Police Department, Detective Amy Larson. As I entered this National Crime Victims Week, I tried to think of a case in which we all wish we had done more. And I had a notice come to me this week from the parole board and involved a defendant by the name of Valentin Flores, who was 
uh, an individual who had already been to prison once before for injuring a child, served a little bit of time and got out on parole. And now he was arrested for assaulting his three-month pregnant girlfriend in their entailed. And this woman had the courage to call, and the police came, and an arrest was made, and everyone did the processes that we have put into place. She uh, was taken to the magistrate, and while he could make a bond, which is what he's allowed to do, he was also given an emergency protective order, which is words told to him in writing that he is not to go back and have contact with that woman. She was allowed to stay in the home and continue to try and be safe while we continued with that. Within three months, he had re-entered that home by kicking in the front door, had knocked down uh, a 10-year-old son of hers, and now at six months pregnant, he grabbed her hair and began to assault her again. We arrested him again. Fortunately, she's recovered from his injuries, and ultimately he was sentenced to 12 years in prison. That's successful in that we did parts of our job that the public see. <laughs> But a true success story would never have required that woman to call a second time for help. In addition, the reason I'm getting this notice from the prison system is because even though he served less than three years on that 12-year prison sentence, he's eligible for parole. And so this, this woman who is trying, like Maria, to establish a life as a single mother with children and be safe, now has to worry about whether we will continue to protect her from the individual who has already attacked her twice. That's one of the reasons I'm inspired, because I begin to remind myself that we're never through. And the theme for this entire day, the theme for this entire event, is to extend ourselves even further so that we reach every single victim successfully every single time. 